this one. Now this one we still have, we have restrictions again because we have variables in the denominator. For this one, x can't equal 0. And for this one, 1 would make that 0, so it also can't equal 1. We would like to, find, to be able to make this a proportion, but no matter what I move around, I'm not going to be able to make it a proportion. If you look at this and you immediately want to add those fractions, that's okay. You can add those fractions. It's just going to add an extra step for you. What I'm going to do is look for my common denominator. Since x minus 1 and x don't have any factors in common, my common denominator is x times x minus 1. And I'm going to multiply on both sides, just like we did in the last section, by that common denominator. So times x times x minus 1. When I multiply times the first fraction, my x minus 1's cancel, and I'm left with 3x. When I multiply times the second fraction, my x's cancel, and I'm left with 2 times x minus 1. For the second one, it's not a fraction, so nothing cancels. I'm going to multiply 4 times x first, and then I want to multiply the result times x minus 1. Now we'll simplify. All right, I have an x squared right here. And it doesn't cancel with anything. So what that tells us is we need to get this whole thing equal to 0 so that we can factor. Remember, anytime you have an x squared, that means you're going to have to factor. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get this equal to 0. And I have 0 equals 4x squared minus 9x plus 2. Now I factor it. This plus sign tells me the signs are going to be the same. They're both going to be minus. The only way to get 2 is 2 and 1. For 4, I can use 1 and 4, or 2 and 2. 4 and 1 works, so 4x and x. This gives me negative 8x and negative x, which gives me negative 9x in the middle. That's what I wanted. Now remember, when I have this set equal to 0, that means this is 0 or this is 0. When you multiply two things together and your result is 0, that means either they're both 0 or one of them has to be 0. So what makes x minus 2 0? 2. And what makes 4x minus 1 equal 0? We go ahead and solve that. x equals 1 fourth. So x is 2 and 1 fourth. Now once I have my answers, I do want to double check with my restrictions that I had at the beginning, which were x cannot equal 0 and 1. Well, we got 2 and 1 fourth, so that's okay. That's our solution. They get a little bit more complicated. This is about as ugly as they're going to look for us. We want to start by doing our restrictions just like before. What makes x minus 2 equal 0? 2, so x cannot equal 2. For this one, we do need to factor it. We have x times x minus 2, so x can't be 0 or 2. All right, now we want to look for our common denominator to multiply by, since we can't make this a proportion. Now, they don't have anything exactly in common. But this x minus 2 and 2 minus x are opposite. So I'm going to take the negative out of this and put it on top, which is going to reorder this. So it's going to look like 2 over x times x minus 2 plus negative 1 over x minus 2 equals 1. Now my common denominator is x times x minus 2. All right, we distribute to the first one. 
The denominator completely cancels, and so we're left with just 2. When I distribute it to the second fraction, just the x minus 2's cancel. I'm left with x times negative 1, so minus x equals, and over here we, we can go ahead and distribute this, so I have x squared minus 2x. We have an x squared like we did on the last one, which means get it equal to 0 and factor it. So minus 2 on both sides and plus x. All right, now we can factor. Our signs need to be different because this is a minus. So x plus and x minus. 2 and 1 are my only factors for 2, and since I want this to be negative 1, it's going to be positive 1 and negative 2. What makes this equal 0? Negative 1. And what makes this piece equal 0? 2. Were either of those my restrictions? We said x couldn't equal 2, and that was one of our answers, so we have to mark that one out, and it's just x equals negative 1. Here are your steps. You want to list your restrictions first, then see if the problem can be solved as a proportion, and if so, work it that way. If it can't be worked as a proportion, find the common denominator, multiply both sides by it, then simplify and combine like terms. You want to get the equation equal to zero if you have an x squared, and then you want to solve for x. Here are some for you to try, and we'll go over those in class.